Are you a diplomat? No question. Are you a diplomat? I thought um, Title 22, Chapter 2, Section 141, it was them admitting to not having jurisdiction in Morocco. So, 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 so that's what it is, that them admitting that they do not have jurisdiction in Morocco. It's not. For the brother, because it's, you know, Morocco, are you talking about over there in Africa? Me? You know what I'm saying? You do what I'm trying to get a clarification. Morocco is uh, Chicago and Indiana connected from, I mean, from the level one. I'm, I'm drawing off of it's from the Canyon map. You know, I'm talking about this out there. That's what I'm familiar with. But we know that we know that America means our Morocco. You know what I mean? The land of the Moors. You know, so, and we know that a lot of the United States was renamed. You know what I mean? Due to due to them uh, uh, using that iron hand oppression, but that's my level of understanding. What's the question? Was fee simple absolute? No to pay any taxes. No I'm gonna hold fast on that one. Islam, yeah. boy, I'm gonna read out the black like, law dictionary. Islam. It's the fourth edition. Be simple, absolute. He is an estate limited absolutely to a man and his heirs and assigned forever without limitations or condition. And it also gives a law case. I'm going to repeat that. A fee simple absolute is an estate limited absolutely to a man and his heirs and assigns forever without limitation or condition. And the law cases. Rabban versus State, 284 Michigan, 521, 280 Northwest, dot 35, comma 40. Super stuff. Can you um, elaborate on that? I mean, nine tenths, that's, uh, that's a foreigner's claim, possession of Al Moran. That's the 
Brother and sister, nine tenths possession, and the tenth is the one in which, uh, in which the indigenous people can exert or assert their birthrights uh, through a lodium. So what is fee simple absolute? Fee simple absolute just just basically say, just basically states that in layman's term that when Nova Drew Ali received the mandate, he received it on behalf of the Moorish American nation. And he said the eels and the bays were his successors. And when he said it was an everlasting movement, that means the ownership of the land was reverted back to the Moors, and that was the goal. It was to be perpetual. So that means those people that have been operating since that time in 1928 up on the or through or via the nine tenths possession, those people are operating on a foreign land of, a, of an indigenous people, and they owe us. So when we say the American flag, uh, through the American flag, they owe us and they're going to pay off compound interest. That's one of the things we're saying. Uh, they set up and they've been doing business on the land of Alma Rock ever since. Ever since 1928, the property received the mandate. Uh, just like we actually pay a tax, that's the system that's actually supposed to be paid to the more. Mm. The true land barons, the landlords, are the ones that's paying rent, mm. or paying rent through a nine-tenths possession. Mm -hmm. Since they're outside of their proper person, they can't exert their birthrights. So fee simple absolute wouldn't apply to them. So we got one ten. They can't be stopped. They got nine ten. We got one. If they can't control, they can't. They can't supersede. That's the alone. That's peace, simple, absolute. That's what gives us the jurisdiction and authority to do all the things that you see us doing right now. It's love. And we'll put you up under jurisdiction of Rome, and we'll keep you about the jurisdiction of Rome. Well, to put yourself under the jurisdiction of Rome, you have to be a corporation. You carry your driver's license? State ID? Let me see. Oh, let me... If you're a Moorish American, you claim your nationality Moorish American. And there's certain ways that you can put your way, put yourself up under Rome's jurisdiction if you go a certain way. To be a Moorish American, you got to go a certain way, right? Okay, you so saying, you can do what you want to do. You, you want to marry. You can do it. Contract with UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, that puts you under jurisdiction. It's so simple that you can be riding on a, driving on, on, a, on highways and byways traveling, and they will ask you, um, where do you reside? And for you to not correct them, puts you under that jurisdiction. It's wrong. It's wrong. That's how simple it is. It's wrong. So you have to know law, you have to know your terminology, because the smallest word will put you under that jurisdiction. It's wrong. It's wrong. We don't reside, we domicile. It's wrong. Where do you live? Okay, I don't know if you saw it, but a minute ago I agreed with the brother because he was talking about you need to know the law and you need to know these terminologies. I agree. But oftentimes, Moors don't really understand the terminologies, as you can tell by the description of, um, I should say, the definition of the word domicile. Domicile is something that I don't do, because there's really no difference between domicile and residence, as you can tell by the definition. So, uh, you, you, you know, like the prophet said, you know, your brother's going to lead you right back into slavery, They're telling you to get away from the residence. But they're telling you to go right into the domicile, and it's really no difference. So pay attention to the terminology that you use. I'm just here to try to straighten out some of these things. I'm not teaching civics. I just want to point out some of the things that Moors are teaching in these so-called temples, and they're misleading people. So be aware. Where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Wow. <laughs> 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 